The founding fathers were very clear that they expected uh, special interest factions, but they were very clear that it would be a terrible thing if those special interest factions morphed into permanent factions. And we have two permanent factions. The last thing we need is a third or any additional permanent faction. So Americans Elect was conceived not as a party, but as a second nominating process, a way to create a, a venue for the best and brightest in this country to come to power without having to affiliate with a nominating process, without having to declare a party-based ideology, and therefore to remain unencumbered by any demands by any party, and to basically govern under those circumstances. And the theory behind Americans Elect is that people who go through that process, whether for the president and vice president, or for the Senate or House, will be have a different, completely different set of incentives and will be a different kind of a political leader. I don't think there's any field in this country, any business, any any activity in which people don't believe competition doesn't enhance the result for the people who are the beneficiaries, the consumers or the voters. And I think what's happened in this country, and it's it's clear in the numbers, is that many, many voters today feel that we're living with a false competition where we, 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 we see all the stoom and drang of the competition, but we really are not served up real choices, which you get in other marketplaces. And so competition is vital. Technology is a useful tool in the pursuit of that competition, that enhanced competition, but there are other tools as well. So technology really is a way to, um, I think, facilitate the voter expression without having to go through the nominating processes we see today. That is a great question, and um, and obviously we, the fear of ostracism was much greater than I even imagined. Um, I think people will be more uh, more willing to step forward when two things happen. One is they're not as afraid of the punishment, so that the two parties don't have this hold in which if you're not with one tribe or another, you're badly punished. And that partially comes from creating, reducing the friction costs of going through a process. So today you'll discover if you want to get on the ballot in all 50 states and go through what we went through, it's an 18 month effort that requires about 16 to 18 million dollars. And that's a dissuader of many people. And while, by the way, if you were a Republican or a Democrat saying, I don't want to go through the nominating process, but you're going to the street to gather three million signatures for 18 months, your party will kill you. So you have to reduce the friction cost. And the same thing, the second thing is you need friends who are doing the same thing. It's very hard to be the first one sticking your neck out. And by the way, this is why Angus King is potentially such an historically important figure because he's the first one in at least 100 years who's come to power having done, has come to become a senator having done two things nobody else has done. First, renounce the need for any party nomination and two, build a coalition of Democrats, Republicans, and independents from the center out. Nobody has done that in the last hundred years or more. And so he took that step. Uh, maybe Maine was a more receptive place for it, and uh, he was a very successful two-time governor, but now we at least have an example of what that kind of candidate would look like and others can emulate.